Hi, uh, so this is uh, my second uh, tutorial class and uh, we will be solving some problems uh, from uh, simple linear regression, multiple linear regression and also uh, maybe uh, ill conditioning of the uh, coefficient matrix x. Okay, so here is the uh, problem. Uh, problem 3, because problem 1 and 2 we solved in the uh, previous tutorial. So, this says that uh, there are very few occasions where it makes sense to fit a model without an intercept beta naught. If there are occasion to fit the model y equal to beta x plus epsilon that is a model without any intercept to a set of data x 1 y 1, x 2 y 2, x n y n. Then the least square estimate of this beta would be this. Well, so the, we will check this part you know uh, what is the least square estimate for beta. Uh, let me call it beta hat. Okay, for a model without any intercept beta naught. And then the second part is that suppose uh, you have a programmed calculator that will fit only the intercept model y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus epsilon, but you want to fit non intercept model. Okay, so, you have some programmed calculator that fit only intercept model, but you want to fit non intercept model. Now, the question is by adding one more fake data say m x bar m y bar, where m is a function of n and letting the calculator fit the intercept model, can you estimate this beta by using beta 1 hat. Okay, so, this is the problem uh, maybe I will try to uh, explain it uh, once more the problem itself. So, what we are given is that we are given a set of data x 1 y 1 x 2 y 2 and uh, x n y n and we want to fit a, a non intercept model like y equal to beta x plus epsilon. Okay. But we have a programmed calculator uh, for fitting this model model with intercept that is y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus epsilon. So, we have a program to fit this model uh, and we know that for this model beta naught is the estimate of beta naught is equal to y bar minus beta 1 hat x bar and uh, beta 1 hat is equal to s x y by s x x. That means, uh, this is x i minus x bar into y i minus y bar by summation x i minus x bar square. Okay, so, we have a program to calculate these two things given a set of data, but what we want? We want to fit this model to the given data, right? Uh, and it says that the question says that the least square estimate for beta here is equal to summation x i y i by summation x i square first check this one 
uh, what is the least square estimate for beta in the non intercept model. Okay. So, to find the least square estimate for beta, what we do is that we minimize this function s, which is equal to y i minus y i hat, this is the i th residual and uh, we know that this one is equal to y i minus y i hat I can replace by beta hat x i. Right? And then the least square estimate of beta hat is obtained by minimizing this function with respect to beta. So, d s you differentiate it with respect to beta that equal to 0 implies that uh, summation y i minus beta hat x i into x i equal to 0, which implies that beta hat is equal to summation x i y i x i y i by x i square. Okay. So, we prove that you know the least square estimate for beta is uh, this quantity. Now, the problem is that we want to find this beta using the program calculators we have. Okay, let me see the question once more. Uh, suppose we have a programmed calculator that will fit only the intercept model, this one, but we want to fit a non intercept model. Now, the question is by adding one more fake data, say this one can we estimate beta by using beta 1 hat that means by using this program okay so at this moment we have the data x i x 1 y 1 x 2 y 2 and x n y n and if we add one more data say n plus 1 th data that is m x bar n sorry m x bar and m y bar, where m is equal to m is equal to n by n plus 1 to the power of half minus 1 and this is equal to say n by a. Then what is a? a is uh, from here I can write that uh, a plus 1 square is equal to n plus 1. right? Now, what we will do is that we want to estimate uh, x beta plus epsilon, we want to estimate beta hat which is equal to x i y i by x i bar but we do not have program for this one, we have program for estimating uh, the model intercept model that is y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus epsilon and the programmed calculator uh, gives us beta 1 hat equal to summation x i y i minus n x bar y bar by summation x i square n x bar square.
Okay. Now, uh, we will use this formula for the uh, revised data. Let me call this data as u v. Now, for this new data which is now in involving n plus 1 points, what is u bar? Uh, u bar is equal to n x bar plus the new data m x bar, m is nothing but n by a x bar by n plus 1. Okay. So, this one is equal to uh, n x bar into a plus 1 by a by n plus 1. Okay. So, we know that n plus 1 is a plus 1 whole square. So, I can write it this way. So, I can write this one as n x bar by a into a plus 1. Right. So, this is my uh, u bar for the data involving n plus 1 points. And uh, now, let me compute S u u. S u u is nothing but you know what is uh, S x x. So, S u u is equal to uh, summation x i square plus the new data m x bar square minus n plus 1 u bar square, right. Because S u u is, uh, let, let me write here, S u u is nothing but summation u i square minus n plus 1 u bar square and here i is from 1 to n plus 1. So, that is what I wrote here and here i is from 1 to n and then this is the n plus 1 th data and uh, this one can be written as summation x i square plus n square by s square into x s square minus n plus 1 u bar square. What is u bar square? u bar is this quantity. So, uh, n square x bar square by s square into a plus 1 square. So, I can cancel out these two things. right? And then you can see that this term is same as this term. So, you are left with summation x i square. Okay. So, s u u is equal to uh, x i square from i equal to 1 to n. And similarly, you can prove that similarly, you can prove that s u v is equal to summation x i y i. Okay. So, uh, so, now if you apply the programmed calculator to the new data, new set of data which involves n plus 1. Uh, data points and we call them u v, uh, then 
the programmed calculator will give you the estimate beta 1 hat which is equal to uh, S u v by S u u and you have proved that S u v is nothing but summation x i square sorry summation x i y i and S u u is equal to summation x i square. So, you prove that you know using the programmed calculator if you use uh, if you add a fake data here at the end then you can estimate the model without intercept using the formula of model including the intercept okay so that is what uh, we uh, proved just now okay now let me consider uh, another problem so call this problem 4 okay so this one says that fit the model y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus epsilon to the data given below okay so here we have uh, two regressors x 1 and x 2 and one response variable y and what you have to do is that you provide an ANOVA table this is quite straightforward problem and perform the partial F test to test H naught that beta i equal to 0 against uh, H 1 that beta i is not equal to 0 for i equal to 1 to given the other variable is already in the model. So, to test the significance of ith regressor in the presence of other regressors in the model. Okay. So, let me do till this one and then it said that comment on the relative contribution of the variables x 1 and x 2 depending on whether they entered the model first or second. I okay, will come to this point later on. Okay, so, it is it's a uh, multiple uh, linear regression problem involving uh, two regressors and uh, we are given the data like uh, for x 1, x 2 and uh, y. So, we have to fit uh, the model that means, we have to estimate the parameters beta naught, beta 1 and uh, beta 2. So, once we are done with the estimation of the parameters, then uh, we can have the ANOVA table and after getting the ANOVA table, we estimate uh, sorry, we test the significance of the model that is called the global test and after the global test, what we will do? We will go for the partial F test to test the significance of the ith regressor in the um, presence of other regressors okay. and uh, after that we just you know sort of uh, compare the uh, rel relative uh, contribution of x 1 and x 2 I mean which is uh, more significant to explain the variability in y. Okay. So, this is the uh, given data for two regressors and one response variable and we have to fit the model. The model is y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus epsilon and we know how to fit this model. So, what I will do is that. Okay. So, first uh, we will write down the x matrix. Uh, so, x matrix you can see that uh, this is corresponds to x naught which all 1 and then the x 1 and x 2. So, once you have the x matrix you know that uh, the 
estimated beta hat is equal to x prime x inverse x prime y. So, you are given y you know x you can compute you can check that <coughs> beta naught is equal to 46 by 7 beta 1 is equal to 1 and uh, beta 2 is equal to 2. Okay. So, the fitted model is this one this is the fitted model y hat is equal to uh, 46 by 7 plus x 2 beta 1 x sorry beta 1 x 1 beta 1 is equal to 1 and beta 2 x 2 beta 2 is equal to 2. So, this is the fitted model. Okay. Now, what we have to do is that once we have the uh, fitted model, we will uh, go for the uh, ANOVA table. Sorry. So, ANOVA table. Okay. So, the source and uh, then degree of freedom sum of square m s and the a value and uh, the sources are here the total Okay. So, what is SS total? Uh, SST is uh, equal to summation y i minus y bar square and you can check that you are you know the y i values. So, you can check that this is equal to 73.71. So, my SS total is 73.71 okay. and uh, we know y hat i values and then we know the original observed values also. So, y i. So, from here you can compute E i the ith residual and then you can compute the S s residual also. So, S s residual is nothing but summation e i square i is from 1 to n. Okay. So, you can check that the S s residual is uh, 1.71. So, this is residual and then we are left with the regression So, the regression uh, you can uh, check uh, that the regression is 72.00. Okay. Now, here is the problem how many observations we have? We have uh, 7 observations. So, the degree of freedom for uh, S s total is 6 and then the residual degree of freedom would be uh, 4 because there are 7 e i s and, uh, and there are 3 restrictions because of 3 parameters. Uh, so, the degree of freedom for the residual is 4 and the regressor regression has degree of freedom 2. Okay. So, now you can compute the m s value m s values are 36 here and this is 0 0.43. So, the f statistic value is 36.00 by 0. 43, which is equal to 83.72. Okay. 
So, using this f value, uh, this is uh, this is the total variability uh, in the response about the mean, and this is the part of total variability which is explained by this uh, model, and this is the part which remain uh, unexplained. So, we can test the significance of the fitted model by testing this hypothesis that H naught that beta 1 is equal to beta 2 is equal to 0. So, this says that the uh, fitted model is not significant, not significant against the alternative hypothesis that uh, H naught is not true. That means, the alternative hypothesis says that the fitted model is significant and you can clearly see that you know, the model is very significant because it is almost you know, 99 percent uh, of the total variability is explained by the uh, fitted equation. Okay. Uh, so, how to test this one? This one can be test using the F statistics given here. So, the observed F value which is equal to 83.72 and you compare with uh, compare this value with the tabulated value. What is the degree of freedom for f? So, f follows here f has degree of freedom uh, 2, 4. Now, you check the tabulated value of f 0 0.05 2, 4 from the f table that you can check that this one is 6.94. So, the observed value is greater than the tabulated value, which implies that uh, H naught is, is rejected. So, the, so the global test uh, um, says that the fitted model is significant. Now, what we will do is that uh, there are two uh, regressor variable in the model. We will test the significance of say x 2 first in the presence of x 1. So, we will test whether x 2 is significant in the presence of x 1 when, when x 1 is there in the model and then again similarly what we will do is that we will test the significance of x 1 in the presence of x 2 in the model. So, those things we will do using uh, partial f test also you can go for uh, t test. right? So, now we will go for uh, partial F test. So, we test H naught that beta 2 is equal to 0 against the H 1 that beta 2 is not equal to 0 and this is this test is in the presence in the presence of x 1 in the model. Okay. So, how do you test this one? We go for if you go for the partial f test uh, here is the f statistic f is equal to uh, SS regression for the full model minus SS regression for the restricted model. Restricted model. Okay. And uh, we will see uh, you can check that this has to be uh, divided by 1 by m s residual. Okay. We know what is the full model. Full model is uh, y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus epsilon and the restricted model is the model under h naught. So, restricted model is basically y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus epsilon. Okay. So, we know what is SS regression for
for the full model. So, if you look at the ANOVA table, we know that SS regression for the full model is 72. Okay. So, here we will put 72 minus now to find the SS regression for this restricted model, what you have to do is that you have to fit uh, model with uh, x 1 l 1. That means, you have to fit this model and you can check that the fitted model would be y hat is equal to 46 by 7 minus 66 by 68 into x 1. So, you you are given the data x 1, x 2, y. So, you can fit a model between x 1 and y you know how that is that means a simple linear regression. So, this is the fitted model and once you have the fitted model you can compute the uh, SS regression due to this model uh, that that is nothing but 64.06 you check this one. Okay. Now, this has degree of freedom 2 and this has degree of freedom 1. I hope you know why uh, that is. So, 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. So, you divide this by 1 and now the MS residual from the ANOVA table of MS residu residual is 0 0.43. Okay. So, we put that the MS residual is 0 0.43. Well, so, this one is equal to 18.53 and we know that this F statistic uh, has degree of freedom 1, 4, 4 is the residual degree of freedom. right? Now, you find the uh, tabulated value of F 0 0.0514 uh, that is equal to 7.71 7 and you have the observed value F that is 18.53. So, this test says that yes beta 2 is significant. So, this means H naught is rejected. Uh, so, H naught is rejected at 5 percent level of significance okay. and uh, so at the 5 percent level of significance we can say that x 2 is significant in the presence of x 1 in the model. Okay. Now, uh, let us check uh, whether this is significant at uh, point zero 0.01 level of significance. So, compute uh, you find the value of tabulated value of f 0 0.0114 uh, that you can check that this is equal to 21.20. So, the f value is less than this one. So, here h naught is accepted that means, uh, at 1 percent level of significance uh, x 2 is not significant in the presence of uh, x 1, whereas at the 5 percent level of significance uh, x 2 is significant in the presence of x 1. So, that is the uh, uh, conclusion of this partial test. So, at least you know at 5 percent level of significance we observe that beta 2 is significant or x 2 is significant in the presence of x 1. Now, what we will do is that we will check uh, the significance of x 1 in the presence of x 2. So, we will go for the partial test say h naught that is beta 1 equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis h 1 that beta 1 is not equal to 0. Okay. 
So, here same thing we uh, the statistic for testing this hypothesis is f which is s s regression for the full model minus s s regression for the restricted model. Okay. and here it should be divided by 1 by m s residual. So, here what is the restricted model here? Here the restricted model is y equal to beta naught plus beta 2 x 2 plus epsilon, because the restricted model is the model under h naught. So, again you have to fit model with uh, x 2 alone and you can check that the fitted model is y hat equal to 46 by 7 plus 69 by 68 x 2 and once you have the fitted model you can find out the s s regression. So, s s regression is equal to 70 point 0 1. Okay. So, this one is greater than the s s regression we got for the model with x 1 alone okay. that was 64. Okay. Anyway, so this one is equal to uh, the 72 is uh, regression uh, s s regression for the full model and this one is seventy point zero one by m s residual we know that is zero point four three. Okay. So, this one is equal to four point six four. Now, you check. Uh, so, your observed value is four point six four and the tabulated value f 0 0.05 one four here that is equal to 7.71. So, the observed value is less than the tabulated value that means H naught is accepted. what is the meaning of this one? That means, beta naught 1 sorry that means, beta 1 equal to 0 when beta 2 is in the model beta 1 equal to 0 is accepted. So, the implication of this one is that uh, if x 2 is there in the model, we do not need x 1, because you can see that uh, the full model can explain 72 I mean for the full model s s regression is 72 and for the model involving only x 2 is 70. So, uh, the, which is almost like full model right. So, uh, the implication of this one is that implication is that if x 2 is in model, we do not need x 1, x 2 is enough. So, if you have x 2 first in the model, we do not need to include x 1, but if 
x 1 is in model, then we have tested that you know uh, the significance of beta 2 in the presence of x 1 is significant. So, if x 1 is in the model, then we uh, include x 2. So, x 2 helps out significantly. Right. So, this is what the implication of uh, these two partial test and uh, uh, let me also conclude that thus uh, x 2 is clearly the more useful variable and it explain I will compute the uh, coefficient of determination r square for x 2 itself. So, uh, uh, for the model involving x 2 alone we have uh, observed that the SS regression is 70.01 and the total variability is in the response variable is put SST is 73.71. Okay. That means, the 95 percent of the total variability is explained by x 2 alone. So, 95 percent of the variability in y So, it explains 95 percent of the variability in y about mean, whereas x 1 explain uh, let me compute r square. So, along with s only x 1 in the model the s s regression was 64.06 by S S T that is 73.71. So, this is 86 percent. So, x 1 explain 86 percent uh, of the total variability in y about mean. So, x 1 explain 95 percent of the total variability in y, whereas sorry x 2 explain 95 percent of the total variability in y, whereas x 1 explains uh, 86 percent of the total variability in y okay. and, and x 1 and x 2 together explain 72 by 73.71 that is 97 percent of total variability. Okay. So, uh, the conclusion is that uh, x 2 is uh, more useful a regression variable uh, than uh, x 1, because x 2 alone can explain uh, 95 percent of the total variability and also x 2 is significant in the presence of x 1, whereas x 1 explain, explain uh, 86 percent of the total variability and uh, x 1 is not significant in the presence of uh, x 2. Okay. Uh, but one more thing you know I just uh, want to say this problem is particularly interesting, interesting because of the 
one more fact that uh, here uh, you can see that uh, the data here you can see that uh, they are x 1 and x 2 are not independent. I mean uh, x 1 can be written in terms of x 2. In fact, you can check that x 1 plus x 2 is almost equal to 0. So, uh, there, uh, th these two regressor variable are dependent right. Uh, so, this sort of indicates that you know uh, uh, there could be multi collinearity I mean in fact, there is multi collinearity in the in this data and that is why the test also says that you know you do not need x 1 if x 2 is present in the model. So, it is enough to uh, keep only x 2 in the model. I mean both x 1 and x 2 are not required. Okay. So, next uh, we will be uh, considering another problem. So, this problem is uh, let me call it problem 5. Okay. So, it says that can we use the data below to get a unique fit to the model y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta 3 x 3 plus epsilon. So, can we fit this model uniquely using this data that is the question. Okay. So, you look at the data carefully. Uh, so, this involves how many parameters? It has uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 parameter and uh, we have this data. So, it is a multiple linear regression model with uh, 3 regressors. right? So, you can write it in this form y equal to x beta plus epsilon and then we know that we know how to estimate this uh, regression coefficients uniquely. We know that beta hat is equal to x prime x inverse x prime y and why what is the problem here then? why it says that uh, can we use the data below to get a unique fit to the model why not okay so look at the x matrix here so i have included x0 here okay so x0 means beta0 x0 and then x1 x2 and x3 and you know that you know the x1 column is corresponds to this uh, column and then simply I will compute x prime x inverse and then I get the estimate right. But uh, is there any problem here? Okay, so, we need to check whether there exist you know uh, whether this all these uh, columns are uh, independent or not. Um, here I can see that x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 is equal to 0. That means, uh, uh, the columns of this matrix uh, are not independent, which implies that x prime x is, is singular. Right, and uh, then we, if it is so, the determinant of x prime x uh, is going. To, I mean, it's singular, so the determinant of x prime x is going to be zero. So you can't compute the inverse of uh, this uh, 
x prime x matrix. So, that is why uh, the problem you know you cannot compute the um, beta uniquely here. Okay? Um, so, the ultimate answer to this question is uh, no. So, we cannot use uh, the data below to get a unique fit to this model. Okay? So, this problem is uh, related to the uh, yield conditioning of uh, x matrix. right? So, uh, uh, today uh, we considered three problems, you know first problem was from the simple linear regression model, the second problem was very standard problem in multiple linear uh, regression model and the problem was very interesting, you know it is uh, sort of uh, uh, you have two regressors and then we uh, finally, we observed that you know x 2 is significant in the presence of x 1. Um, so, uh, so, but whereas the x 1 is not significant in the presence of x 2. So, uh, x 2 is more useful regressive variable than x 1 for the uh, given data and uh, finally, you observe that the two regressors are not uh, uh, independent. And uh, so, there exist multicollinearity that is why one, one variable is enough to explain the total variability in the response variable. And uh, the finally, the fifth problem was uh, about the yield conditioning of the uh, coefficient matrix. Okay? So, in the next tutorial again, you know, we will discuss some more problem. Thank you.